This is an old Garmin GPS unit. In fact, a 2589 LMT. What we're going to do today is we're going to change out the battery. All right, we're gonna be using a Torx T5 bit. It's a very fine star bit. I don't know if you can tell. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna turn counterclockwise like this until the screw emerges and then do that to all four corners. Okay, you can see along the edge here, I have already pried the screen from the case. So all you gotta do is use a blade or a pry tool or something. It's a snap fit case that pops open like that. Okay, looking at it from the Garmin logo side, like that where the micro USB type B charge port is, very carefully and gently lift it open like that. And we can see I've already removed the original battery from the unit, which is right, goes into this space right here. Be careful, the speaker's just floating and don't rip the cable uh, going to the display. It's helpful to flip the unit over like this where the Garmin logo is away from you and then open it up like that. That gets you access to the battery installation slot and the connector on the mainboard logic right there where the cable from the battery plugs into like a little Lego brick. All right, so this is the original made in Japan um, 2015 3.7 volt, 820 milliamp hour or 3.03 watt hour LiPo lithium ion battery, lithium cobalt oxide. I've already disconnected it and then replaced the adhesive strip back into the unit. This is the replacement 1000 milliamp hour, 3.7 volt GPS navigator 010-01187-01. Uh, replacement battery, otherwise known as an X002Y7BF89. And that is the replacement battery right there inside of a plastic bag. The only major difference we notice here is that it's gray instead of white, and the end connector is white instead of black like the original. Comparing the wires and connectors there, we see that the red is on the right side of the connector and black is on the left and the sensor wire green in the original and white on the aftermarket are in the correct position. So they are technically electrically similar. So this is safe to use in the unit. You can tell this is a LiPo because there's a luminized foil. That's that shiny bit on the end. Um, that's the sticker with a label on the front. Um, these are mass manufactured in a roll forming machine. Uh, very complicated to manufacture. You should look up how LiPo batteries are made or how lithium ion batteries are made on YouTube. I use the co ceramic coffee cup like this to hold the lid open. That allows you to place the battery into the hole where it belongs. And I would recommend first plugging in the connector. So if you go in there like that, just line it up like that and give it a good plug like that. So now it's plugged in and then you can move the battery around to find a way to route the power cables. Okay, so you can see I had to fold the wire over like that and then push this back down on the adhesive tab that you can see along the edge there underneath. And just press that down like that. The heat cycling of the unit during charge and discharge and sun exposure will be more than adequate to adhere the battery. Make sure that this connector up here is plugged all the way in. It'll make a click on both sides on the leading edge and the front edge or the trailing edge and the front edge. So that's so that it makes a solid electrical connection. That's called a pin blade clamp style connector. There's the original connector. You can see the, the clamps. So those grab onto the charging pins or the power pins inside the unit. All right, to finish the restoration, you just flip the lid down like this and then go all around the border and click it back into place like that. You're just gonna go around the edge. I'm doing this one-handed and holding the phone camera with the other. It's a snap and fit kind of deal. And we can see that the unit turns on and that it's working with the, origin with the aftermarket battery. And we'll make sure it fully boots up. Now it's a wise idea, anytime you put a new um, you put a new battery inside one of these units. Um, 
you want to fully charge the battery. So it's a, it's a really good idea to always fully charge the battery. Um, it looks like it's already been charged, so we're just going to top it off. And we can see that the clock is not exactly accurate. It's actually 1017, not 902. Though, if we hold this button here, we can see that it's going to try to acquire GPS satellites. And for that, we'd have to get over to a window location so that it can see the sky. You can see the constellation. Once it gets a timing signature from four or five satellites, which would be displayed down there where it says one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so forth and so on, it'll use the um, internal chipset along with those timing signals to derive the actual correct time from the GPS satellite signals. Okay, to secure the unit, just use your Torx screwdriver and apply the screws to each of the four corners. You can hear the bits inside my driver rattling around. This was a gift given to me by my mother-in-law. Turned out to be one of the most useful tools anyone's ever given me. So you just go around the edge. These are to secure the plastic spring clips, these screws. It adds uh, structural integrity to the unit so that it doesn't pop open while you're driving. Uh, cars experience a lot of vibration going over road surfaces, so if you're mounting something like this in your window, uh, you want to make sure it's a secure housing, and these screws are used to secure the housing. And just like that. I always go back around and after I seat everything, I, I do one more tight. You can see the unit twisting under torque as I tighten them. This is just what I call finished torque tension. Just make sure all the, the screws are snug. If you're going for a few inch pounds, nothing crazy, or you'll strip the screws out of the plastic housing. Okay, remember you gotta save these LiPos for special recycling. See that trash can logo? Um, take it to a Batteries Plus or um, a solid waste facility or a hazardous waste facility. Um, you want to save up any lithium iron disulfide single energizer use batteries or any LiPo replacement batteries from drones or toys or cell phones or devices like this or laptops. Save them up in a bin. Wrap the electrical connectors with packing tape or anything electrical tape to prevent shorting. Try to set them in the container in a way where they won't perforate or damage one another and bring bring your LiPo batteries for lithium battery recycling. That way they can make use of the cobalt and lithium and the copper and aluminum foil inside the unit. I'm using a Samsung cell phone charger here. You can see this is a five volt, two amp operation. That's USB-A on this end right here. And what you do is you plug this micro USB type B unit like this into the charge port like that. And then the other end just plugs into the power adapter brick like that. And then you plug this into the wall like that. 